So this is a 6400 John Deere tractor with a 640 loader on it. And what this video is going to show is putting a complete three function plumbing kit on it. So we're installing the joystick, the cables, the valve, the power beyond block, the quick couplers, and then all the hoses as well. So we'll show quite a few close up shots of exactly which hoses go to which ports, where the power beyond block goes, etc. Before actually starting to install each of the pieces of the joystick kit, it's a good idea to lay everything out in the order that you're going to install it along with the tools you need, just so everything flows smoothly, and then also read through the instructions before you begin also. So the very first step that we're going to do is we're going to put the power beyond block onto the back of the tractor. To do that, we're going to remove this triangle piece and then we're going to slide each of these bolts out, but we're not going to do that all at once. We're going to first take this bolt out and then we're going to slide the longer bolt in. The longer bolt is replacing it. And the reason we're sliding that in before we remove these is because things tend to kind of fall apart if you pull all the bolts out at once. So once we have the new bolt in here, then we'll pull these out and also put the longer bolt in there. And then that'll give us enough space to put the, with the bolts, to put the power beyond block on and then to put this back on as well. So now we've got all three of the longer studs installed. And so now we're ready to put the power beyond block. Now we're ready to install the power beyond block onto the longer studs. So there's one tiny little piece that is called the dime disc that you don't want to forget about in this step. We're not going to install it right now, um, but right now just for illustrating, I'm gonna show where it goes. It goes in this little slot right here. Um, and we'll put that in after we've put the power beyond block on the studs. So we'll put this on the studs. We'll put the this little piece in this little slot. And then this will slide up against it and will hold this in place. This is a very important part, even though it's tiny. If it's not installed, it'll cause lots of problems with the hydraulics. So we slide the power beyond block on the studs. Snug it up against the side of the block, and then install the dime disc. So now we have the power beyond block installed, and there's three ports that we're going to be working with. This port, this port, it's a little bit too hard to see, but down underneath, there's a little bit of a smaller port. For each of the ports, we're going to install a fitting in. We're going to install the smaller fitting down into the power beyond port, the smaller port way down under there. These two larger fittings we're also going to install for the pressure and the return. So these are the same exact fittings, but the pressure is, um, this is going to be the pressure port, and then that's the return port right there. So we're installing three fittings, the pressure, the return, and the load sense. And then after that, we will attach the hoses to the fittings. Here we're installing the power beyond fitting. Now we're installing the fitting in the return port.
and now we're installing the fitting in the pressure port. So now I've got all three fittings installed. The load sense over here, which is the small one, and then the pressure and the return. We start with the load sense hose, working it up with one end towards the front right part of the cab where the valve is going to be mounted and then attaching the other end to the load sense port on the power beyond block. We are now going to install the return hose to this fitting which is installed in the return port on the block. So now the return hose is installed. The next step is going to be installing the pressure hose. So now all three hoses are installed. We've got the pressure hose installed in the block, the return hose installed, and also the load sense hose. The next step is going to be installing the control valve. The control valve is going to go under the right hand side of the cab on the 6400 John Deere tractor and the first step that we're going to do is install, we're going to remove a couple of the, a couple of the bolts and then install the bracket that will hold the valve. So this is the bracket that will support the valve and that is now fully installed so now we're not ready to attach the valve to this bracket first there's a one bolt that's put into the bracket and then this part is a little bit tricky you got to hold the hold the valve on while tightening the nut on the bolt at the same time to get the valve to kind of stay there and then you can move around installing the rest of the bolts holding the valve to the bracket. So the first step was finger tightening all the bolts and then to come back with uh, tools and tighten them with wrenches. So that's been done. The um, valve is now tightly installed on the valve bracket. So the next part is going to be attaching the hoses that come down from the three ports on the block. As you saw earlier in the video, there were three ports on the block. They were the pressure, the return, and the load sense. So I'm going to show here which port is which on the valve. This is the part that a lot of times gets installed incorrectly, and if you install your, any of the three hoses into the wrong port on the valve, things won't work correctly. So this is the pressure on the outside. This is the return. And then this is really difficult to show on the video, but up back here between the bracket, the side of the bracket and the valve, that's the load sense. So this is load sense way on the inside. Down on the bottom is return, and then up on the side is the pressure. The next step is installing the three 90 degree fittings into the pressure, return, and load sense ports on the valve. This will allow the hoses coming from the power beyond block to fit really well when they're connected to the valve. So now the three fittings for the pressure, return, and load sense are installed in the valve. We've got this fitting here, which is going to be attached to the hose, the pressure hose. This fitting right here, that's allowing the return hose to fit underneath these hoses. The fitting for the load sense is installed, the load sense hose. So now we're installing the three hoses that are coming down from the Power Beyond block, starting with the load sense line. Now we're attaching the return hose and then the final hose for this part of the process is the pressure hose. So now all the hoses are 
installed coming down from the block to the valve. Pressure, the return, and the load sense. The next step is going to be installing fittings in these six ports here. Those fittings will attach to hoses that then go to the quick couplers and from the quick couplers on up to the steel lines on the loader. There's two fittings per port. There's a straight fitting, which we start with, and then there's going to be an L-shaped fitting, which goes on that, and that allows the hose to be pointing in the correct direction. So now we're installing the second fitting, which is the L-shaped one, which attaches to the straight fitting, which went into the port as the first step. The hose will actually be attached to this L-shaped fitting. So as you can see here, all six ports now for the hoses that are going to go up to the quick couplers and then to the steel lines on the loader are installed. The next step is before we actually attach the hoses to these fittings, what we're going to do is install the quick coupler plate and the quick couplers and then we'll attach the hoses that go between these fittings and the quick couplers. So here we got the quick coupler plate which has the six holes in it which the quick couplers will be installed in and we've got it attached to a little tab that is on the mounts. This is a Legend uh, mount and 640 loader that we're working with, so this tab was uh, automatically included with the mount. With a John Deere, it may or may not be there, but you could easily weld the little tab on to attach the plate to. So what we're doing here is attaching the two first quick couplers that we installed to the hoses, to two of the hoses that'll go down to the fittings on the valve and we're installing these two at a time so that things don't get too crowded. All six of the quick couplers are now installed in the quick coupler plate. All six of the hoses are attached on this side. And they are also attached on the six ports on the valve. A closer look at these hoses, um, these two and these two will be controlling the lift and lower and tilt and retract on the bucket. And then these two hoses, let's see here, this hose and this hose, you notice that they line up with the solenoid block right here. Um, that is, there's a solenoid block on the other side as well. That is basically, it's a little bit difficult to see, but that is the electric third function, um, which is controlled with buttons on the joystick handle and which is opening and closing the grapple. The next step is going to be attaching the next set of six hoses that are going to go from the quick couplers up to the steel lines. All right, so the next step is taking off the female part of each quick coupler set and then threading on the elbow-shaped fitting. And then um, this fitting will be attached to the hose that goes up to the steel lines on the loader. So that will be attached there. We'll thread that on, and then we'll attach the female quick coupler to the male side of the quick coupler on here. And then notice too that the um, plug, the plug has been installed. This is used for keeping the um, quick coupler clean when you're taking the loader off. So the hoses are all connected to the quick couplers now. If we follow the hoses up to the steel lines on the loader, you can see that they're all installed there as well. So 
Now the bracket with the hose, hose clamps has been installed here. This is keeping the hoses that are going from the quick couplers up to the steel lines on the loader, keeping them nice and tidy. The next step is going to be installing the brackets for the joystick. With the 6400 John Deere, we install the joystick on the front right post in the cab. a hole that was actually drilled in the floor of the tractor to make room for the cables as well as the wires that go from the buttons on the joystick down to the third function on the valve. So here what we're showing in the video is putting the cable ends down through the hole so that they can be attached to the valve. Installing the joystick handle. You can see that there's two brackets here that are holding the joystick. The first bracket, the larger one, is directly attached to the front right post in the cab. And then the second bracket here, it has it's what the base of the joystick is actually attached to, as you can see right here, and then that that little upside down smiley face there allows you to tilt the joystick forward or back according to where you want the handle to end up. There's a similar slot here that allows you to attach this, this bolt in such a way that your joystick can be tilted to the left or the right a little bit depending on where you want the joystick to end up. This one we tilted the joystick handle a little bit to the left so that it's easy to reach when operating the tractor. The next step is going to be installing the wiring harness. The joystick does come with a sh short pigtail and a plug that plugs into the wiring harness. And then the wiring harness itself goes down through the same hole in the floor as the cables and then attaches to the electric parts of the valve. This is the part of the wiring harness that plugs directly into the pigtail and the joystick. The red wire here is going to the power source in the tractor and this supplies the power that goes to the third, the electric third function. We do include this standard plug in the kit and if you have it it's a nice feature. If you have a plug that that can plug into it's a nice feature because this Will attach directly to this and then you're done you've got your power source connected if you don't have a source a standard plug for plugging it in then you'll have to snip the end off of this and then direct wire it to the power source in your tractor so now there is a power source going to the joystick when the buttons are activated that of course goes down carries the power down to the third function on the valve which opens and closes the grapple so here we're down under the tractor again. We're looking at the opposite end of the wiring harness. You've got the two pieces here that plug into the solenoid valve, both solenoids on the electric third function on the valve. And then this black wire here, that's the ground. The wiring harness needs to be plugged into both sides of the electric spool on the valve. What we're showing here is attaching the ground on the wiring harness. You can go to any piece of metal and make sure you've got a good ground. You don't want to attach it to a piece of metal with thick paint on it because that might affect the quality of the ground. Before actually installing each cable tip, you'll want to make sure that you know which tip is the raise and lower and which one is the tilt and retract. So a little trick for doing that is the first thing is to pull out the lockout tab on the joystick which unlocks the joystick. You see the one that's the cable tip that is moving in and out, that's going to be your one that you use for the 
raise and lower of the loader. Once you've established that, you um, you can mark this or set this in such a way that you remember which one is which. And then it's really important that you push the lock tab in again on the joystick. The lock tab has to be in so that the joystick is in neutral when you're installing the cable tip. So this is a view from underneath, looking up at the spools on the valve. Um, those are, that's where the cable tips are going to attach. The spool on the outside right is going to be raising and lowering the loader. The final step in installing the kit is attaching both cables to the spools on the valve. This video is just giving an overview of showing how the cables are connected. We do have a separate video that gives the specifics on exactly how the different cable connector pieces all hook together. The final step after installing the cables is to test the functions and just make sure everything works correctly. Lift. Lower. Tilt. Retract. Okay, so now that the kit has been installed and tested and it works correctly, I'm just going to quickly do a walk around showing each installed component. So up here we've got the hoses which are attached to the steel lines on the loader. They come down to the quick couplers and the, from the quick couplers the hoses go down to the valve where those six hoses are controlling the lift, lower, tilt, retract and the grapple open and close. We've got the hoses that are going back to the three hoses that are going back to the block also installed as well as the wiring and the cables for the joystick as well as the joystick itself and the bracket. And then back here we're just going to take a quick look at the power beyond block which is installed and the three hoses the load sense the pressure and the return which are all in hoses, which are all installed in the power beyond block.